outfielder catching a ball in the stands, right. so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's where we, the level of we have played, we've done some other stuff like The Dream, which is basically similar to any other Armando set where someone says their dream and then we cre- recreate their dream. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's fun. That has a pleasant um, turn to it. It's not like, <laughs> how is your life shitty? <laughs> oh, tell us how <laughs> shitty it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all be shitty together. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, well, there's a lot of that. I have, I have a hard time with it, and I think I indulged in the improv community of positivity. When you teach level one, there's a lot of, like, hey, guys, don't worry. Everything's perfect all the time because you have to buoy a person in the world of it and then send them off to make it more difficult in the other levels. Yes. So that's what I consider my job as a level one is to, like, provide you with the proper bubble that you need mm-hmm. to get yourself through, like, two and three before you realize all of a sudden you're in level four and you're like, wait, how did I, how am I, oh, I know how to do stuff because you're, you feel safe and comfortable. But Yeah, but this, like, firm foundation. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I when we I was taking your level one class, we tried to do tag outs. And you're like, uh, 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 don't 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 use those uh, tricks. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I should just rely on these on these instincts or these basic foundational moves. And I, I thought that was a really good move. Like I was frustrated in that moment. Yeah. But like when I on my drive home, I was like, oh, that's probably a good thing because like that's what we're trying to learn or trying to perfect those foundational improv moves. Yeah, I like to think of it like um, like an artist drawing. Like if you go to if you're going to go to art school and they're starting you off, they're giving you a pencil and a piece of paper first. They're not like, oh yeah, did you want to play with the paints that cost millions of dollars? <laughs> oh, a 40 foot canvas? You got it first year. <laughs> like, no, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> they're like, okay, we'll see if you've got it and then we'll let you use all the amazing stuff that we have here at this art school. But it's like, you know, you have to figure out how to walk before, or crawl before you can walk or walk before you can run. Yeah. Like, and it's important to go back to those things. Um, I actually, because I teach level one and haven't performed in a little while, whenever I, like, pop in on something, I find I just stick with foundational stuff. I don't usually do tap-outs or stuff. Um, There's a... uh, there's for a while there was a like a regular class the megaphone show has like guest players so like i'll guest play you know once a month or once every couple months and they had like a a monthly class you could go to that just like helps those of us who are guest players like freshen up on the style um and also for the people who are the main cast to kind of tell us their like the things that they're excited about like Mm -hmm. we're really into we do a lot of fast tap outs or oh we decided we wanted to do a lot of scenes like this because each group that leads it will have a different style yeah that makes sense um and so you'll go cool yeah whatever i can do to make this happen and i remember doing like uh it had been a while and aaron walther was teaching the uh the like armando refresher and uh we did an exercise that was just like constant tap outs. It was just like, okay, we're going to do this thing and we're going to do as many tap outs until we think there's nowhere (laughs) else we can go. And Mm -hmm. we're like, okay. And so we kept trying. And then afterwards he took notes and then gave notes to each of us on our tap out choices. And I thought that that was really fascinating because he was like, you know, like even, even little things like it was like, that was a good tap out. But in the path that we were on, you went three or four steps back in intensity and heightening to make your joke. And so you have to keep us on that. And I was like, Oh, oh, I love this. This is (laughs) great. But it's like just the little ideas, these classes. In fact, I don't know. Uh, I'm excited to take more classes. Cool. I'm going to be doing that soon. Really? I'm trying to go around and take more classes other places. That's exciting. Yeah. That's fun. I, uh, I didn't feel so free to do it before. But, but now, now I do. you can. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. I know. Now it's so free. weird um, to feel not free. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or to realize that you didn't feel free when you become free. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, hmm. I didn't realize I had a thumb upon me. Yeah. Um, So, as far as you guys... uh, Oh, the other thing I was going to ask you about your spreadsheet was... um, Oh, let's talk all day about spreadsheets. I am psyched about this spreadsheet, by Uh, the way. I'm looking forward to looking at it. Oh, I already wrote it down. Of course I did. I was like, heart around the word spreadsheet in my notebook. Um, But 
do you use it for like promotional materials like to say like uh you know this troop has been part of 13 festivals and uh, this town this town and this town and you know performed over a hundred shows yeah you know? bullshit blurbs that yeah that like get people's attention but really don't mean anything <laughs> of course but if you yeah. write it's, it's all about writing it I yeah. mean I've known people that write great blurbs and have done like two shows and you're like how did you get to headline that thing and it's just selling yourself yeah that's that's basically why we do it too and that's why we we love going to festivals um um, but also so we can put more of those festival names in our blurbs. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's fun. And as silly as a bit as it is, it's also based in reality, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we definitely use all of that data. There's another uh, sheet which also tracks um, all of the spending that we do. So spending for festivals, who paid for oh. it, um, and also um, spending for rehearsals, like who's paid and who hasn't paid. Oh. Um, and trying to keep people accountable, which it was, I really struggled to do that because I, I'm, I'm really weird with money. Sure. And, um, and money's always weird uh, to either receive or give. My friends will all tell you I'm really weird about it. Money is a, is like it's a deal so breaker. Strange. It's I so know. crazy. To like talk about, um, but I created everything um, and just said, hey, let's be transparent. Let's be responsible players. Um, if people pay for something and you're not there, like you're still somewhat responsible for it and so that we're all like on the same page do you guys do like dues uh we don't do any dues uh necessarily um but for rehearsals a lot of what we do is we if we have enough people we pay five dollars um towards the rate of the coach and then any extra money will go towards uh festival costs so maybe those are sort of dues yeah so to speak yeah I mean probably better you don't call them dues people don't like it yeah I, it's uh, not a membership I, club <laughs> yeah yeah well I mean I, I always like to I, I tried to do dues for a little while with the neighborhood because we were buying a lot of props or I was buying a lot of props uh, and I was yeah. like guys I hate to tell you this but I'm the number one person that doesn't have money in this group I was like do you know this is all the only job I have yeah <laughs> so I don't have any money. Um, I was like, so if we could all throw some money into this PayPal, it would help me buy the props that you want. I was like, I'll go find stuff everywhere. I'll go hell and high water to find the perfect mask that we need for something, but I don't have the money to buy it. Like, <laughs> Did you find that was hard to do? Yeah, and it yeah, sort of too. failed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also keep in mind, like, my group is an ever evolving group. So it was like people would join us and then I'd be like, great, give me money. And they were like, not into it. It was like the group that came up with the idea of having the dues paid great. That was wonderful for about three or four months. That group was all like, this is the right thing to do. And yeah. I was like, okay. But then when new people came in, they were kind of like, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. And it's so just then. It's a multi level marketing thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> what are you doing with that money? And it's like, okay. So. Yeah, um, that can be tough. Uh, yeah, but it, I think I like the idea that your spreadsheet is open to every every member, so it's like super transparent. It's not like, what's happening with that money? How is that working? It yeah. should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm excited that your um, that your uh, new troop, uh, like the new group that's together, um, is. Uh, is having fun and yeah. going to develop some cool new stuff. I think so, too. I think it should be a good time. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize, uh, it's totally wild, when I called you to do the those shows, I didn't realize you hadn't had shows for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, I just I just heard that you guys had re-upped and had new members, and I was like, well, they're making something new, let's mm -hmm. do it. Oh, no, yeah, thank um, you, yeah. It seemed like the, uh, it seemed like, you know, if you're, if you're out there trying to make something, you're putting people together and you're excited about it why shouldn't that be the person who's on stage thank you yeah <laughs> it felt really good so thank you for giving us shows allowing us to create this art form that sometimes is great <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's not great it's okay i'll say it yeah, it's fine it's fine <laughs> uh, i wanted to go back to a subject um that i'm really interested in right now 100%. um so we talked about like audience interactivity uh -huh. um and so there's like Things that I've loved this that I got to experience in the last like past year. Are you familiar with Meow Wolf? Or have you heard of this? I heard of it via Facebook stuff, but mm -hmm. I uh, I tell me about it. Um, it's an interactive museum 
uh, and um, it's this house art installation and there's a bunch of secret passages um, but there's also a narrative that you can follow throughout this art installation it starts with a letter you read this piece of mail and it leads you to a newspaper and that newspaper leads you to a safe where you input a code um, but it's all of these different installations of art that you can interact with the books you can open magazines you can read uh, a refrigerator that you can open and you can go inside and it takes you to another installation huh. um, but it's interactive and it feels personalized um, and there's like things that I discovered that my friends who visited didn't didn't discover it's things that they discovered that they told me about um, but it felt unique and that um, I also got to do Sleep No More. Have you ever heard of Sleep No More? Um, maybe. Is it New York? It's in New York. Yeah, it's in, like an interactive Macbeth. I think it's Macbeth. Is okay, it Macbeth? so it's yes. like a big party, right? And yeah. you wander around and people mess with you? Tell me about it. Yeah. Um, it is. It takes place on uh, this in this building in New York. It's three stories. It's three hours. 70 bucks 80 bucks it's super expensive but totally worth it 80 bucks for 3 hours that's pretty solid I know yeah um, <laughs> it's an interactive play instead of the stage happening like uh, where you sit and watch this is like um, a play that's happening in 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 this building on all different levels so you meet this cast member um, and they're like interacting with this other cast member and they're doing this play in front of you and you can follow them through all of their 3 hours or you can follow a different scene. There's oh. there's maybe like 20 or 25 scenes happening all at once. So everything's different every time. Does the person who, and maybe you don't know this because of the way you interact with it, mm -hmm. but is it that, are there 25 different narrative threads that go for three hours? Or is it like one, 25 different scenes that get played repetitively? I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. Repetitively um, uh, over and over. They are... Uh, there are different threads that kind of go into one main narrative at the end, like a climax at the end. So all of those different scenes are unique to... Uh, it's one show, but if you follow one character, you're missing another thread or different scenes. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Sort of. Okay. So the person... So if you're an actor in this show, you start the show and you don't have the same conversation over and over. You have one conversation in your story thread that lasts until you get to the final everyone's all together in one place? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So you could spend three hours with one thread. Yes. And then... But you can also leave your thread and go to the middle of another one. Totally. Yeah. Interesting. And as audience member, you it feels very personal and it feels very immersive. Like, as soon, it took me like 20 minutes to get into it, but I was like, oh... Oh, I can do whatever I want. I can go explore. I can find these codes and these hints and these clues and Easter eggs. Um, and that feeling that I got from Sleep No More and Meow Wolf are, like, some of the best, like, feelings I've ever felt um, in, huh. the, in this art um, performances because it felt personal and interactive. Um, yeah. And so maybe going back to what we were talking about with Fuck This Week, it feels cathartic because it's like... Uh, we're experiencing life, and it f often feels isolating and alone, and we need to feel like connected to something or someone else that's either bigger than ourselves or whatever it is. I'm sorry, I'm getting really deep, but this no, is no, I'm I think. super into it. Um, but those experiences made me like super, super immersed in those, in those things, and uh, I don't know, it just like gave me such creative energy and creative spark. Yeah. Where did you see Meow Wolf? I saw it online and it advertised it as an event in another state. Yeah, it's in Are they here Santa for Fe. South by? Yeah, they're here for South by. Oh. Uh, I so. thought that maybe that's why it made it on my feed. I was like, yeah. oh, it's probably just something South by advertising to me. Mm -hmm. And I did click on it because it is a fascinating name, Meow Wolf. I uh, was like, well, great. I need to know what that is. Yeah. I was uh, like, I thought maybe it was going to be uh, like a DJ with a you know, cat <laughs> head meowled. or something. Yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. It was like, just, oh, all right, cool. just howls the whole time and maybe meows. 
I imagined more like just ratatat, but like it's just a guy with a <laughs> with a uh, half wolf, half cat head. I don't know. Ratatat. Love me some ratatat. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, though I feel like I would never. I, I see people go to concerts, and I was like, "What's happening? He's pressing a laptop. How's that going? Mm-hmm. Is that super awesome? Yeah. There better be a fucking light show and a puppet show or something." <laughs> um,